Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2, Elder Kings Edition. Actually, this is the Dawnguard Edition. It's Elder Kings 2. It's all of the above. It's all of the above. And we are back with Queen Freer, the betrayed. The the the, the, the betrayed by her great deity, Molog Ball, who has decided to celebrate his newfound triumphant power by leaving Mundus. And loyal vassals such as Queen Freer behind. Now that she's been left alone, abandoned by her deity, Queen Freer looks towards what is next. In her old age and impending mortality, Queen Freer begins to think about... Uh, ooh, she gets to look at these little claims we got. That's neat. I didn't see that before. Anyways, <clears throat> this episode is actually a re-recording of episode 15. Uh, or, well, it would be a re-recording of the same episode as this one. Pretty much meaning I've already recorded this, but for some reason the audio wasn't working, so I have to redo it all over again. Which I hopefully will make this a bit more cut and dry, and hopefully a, a little a less what is it shorter than the la than, than the prior recording I did. I think that ended up being 50 minutes. I think we might be able to now that I know what I'm going to do, condense it down to maybe 30 minutes. We will see. Anyways, in the prior recording, what ended up happening is Queen Freer invaded White Run. And conquered King Jorvar the Just, attacking him in the middle of, uh, well, I, I thought he was at war with somebody else, but he might not be this time. And conquering Whiterun, and then eventually declaring war on the Bear and conquering Eastmarch. And some pretty epic battles, which unfortunately we won't get to see. Quite tragic. But once we conquered these two kingdoms, the only kingdom left was the Rift, and they were in no position to resist Hafingar, and Queen Freer was actually able to create the title Kingdom of Skyrim. So, that's kind of what I want to do this episode. I'm going to kick the timer on so we can start getting that monies, and we're going to look and see, because at the... Oh, oh god damn it. They're part of the defensive pact opposing Queen Freer. Well, that's not good. That means we can't attack them because bad shit will happen to us. Let's see. Uh, ooh, we could attack East March. We could attack East March. They're not in the defensive pact. They would give us a fuck ton of territory, and we would be one major step closer towards recreating the title of Skyrim, which is what we need. Which is what we had set out to do. We were going to create the province of Skyrim, and from Skyrim, we would use it as a foothold to, well, get complete favor from Molag Ball and pretty much start a mass cleansing of non-Ball worshippers, essentially heretics. And I think if we do that, we will be the first province in Tamriel that is ruled by a Daedric worshipper. Daedric worshipper? A Daedra worshipper. Molag Ball, no less. Now, when we look at our armies compared to East March, they do outnumber us. They outnumber us. They do. However, they don't have as experienced commanders as we do. All right, I'm gonna go down here. Is uh, Ooh, Court Scald. Okay, we need to check up on our commanders. Primarily, get in there, Gamora. Uh, is LeMay here? I'm gonna need LeMay. Nope, I think she's still my marshal. There's uh, my daughter, Marilis. Yeah, let's throw my daughters in there. They're awesome, so we're gonna... Uh, sorry, uh, Marshal LeMay, but I'm going to actually change you with Gamora, the chiefess of Olenveld, this little island here. We're going to send you here. Train the troops. All right. And then get rid of that shit. And then LeMay, I need you to lead my armies. Lead my armies. So we've got Tannis LeMay, Princess Patema, Princess Marilis, Princess Fear. So all of my daughters are commanders. Excellent. And before the Warlord trait expires, we should probably declare war now. So they do outnumber us by... Maybe 300 men? Those retinues? Yeah, they outnumber us. But... Ooh. But... Their commanders are shit. And if you look at their king, the cautious, he's he's a terrible leader. Terrible leader. If he leads any armies, their, 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 their flanks will instantly crumble. Um, I think last episode we attacked Whiterun when they're in the middle of declaring war on somebody. They're in the middle of fighting war with Grey Winter, I think. And East March was actually invading the Rift. So we attacked them both unawares. Unfortunately. Okay, so they're no longer apart. They're no longer apart. 
of the defensive pact. And I would be much more willing to attack Whiterun. And then that will be one step closer towards East March, or maybe I should conquer East March first. But this time, East March not, isn't distracted by fighting a war in the Rift. It will be mano y mano, which maybe that'd be even more glorious. One thing I have to keep in mind is the terrain of some of these 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 uh, territories, because you see their supply limits. Ooh, their supply limits are not that good. <clears throat> not. <clears throat> Ooh, pardon me. Well, I mean, what I mean, what really is a good supply limit? All right, so that's a good supply limit. Yeah, I remember now. The last time I recorded this, I had some really bad problems with attrition. I was losing hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Not hundreds of thousands. But thousands, to say the least. So what we probably should do is raise our forces. We also have quite the treasury, so we can hire out mercenaries. Mogram only has 70 gold. And I think he only has 64. Okay, so we also have the advantage in terms of money. Hafingar is a lot wealthier than these two, and because of that, we can we can replenish the ranks with mercenaries. So I think when we launch all our we launch all of our troops, we should probably throw them in ships. Fourteen that'd be about fourteen hundred soldiers that we can move. All right, so whatever mercenary groups we have are going to have to wait in the capital while we move our tr our troops here, but that way we can, in theory, uh, avoid. We can avoid attrition. I'm just looking at these territories. Let's see. If we landed in Kastov, we would be protected from Morvenskar, but that's it. If we land in Shoreflow, we'd be protected from Windhelm and uh, straight across the coast of Blacklight to Bleak Rock. Okay. Gotcha. So if we landed in Shoreflow... Uh, Let's see, they'd have to attack us from Cold Winter. So we would have a defensive position from Windhelm and Morvenskar, but we'd be vulnerable from Kastov. How about you? Ooh, they got nothing there. <clears throat> so we don't want to go to Cold Winter. <clears throat> and this is important. The, the, t the terrain is important because... When we fought... When we fought East March, they had more soldiers than we did, and only by... What did we do? We took Windhelm right away because, again, they're distracted in the south. We took Windhelm and we forced the enemy to march back to their capital where they lost all terrain bonuses because they kept doing this shit where they would, like, hide around a mole or snow ground. And the thing about these territories is rivers flow all around them, which makes it so that if we attacked them, they would have the advantage and they already had the numbers advantage, so we couldn't give them any more advantages outside of that. Yes. I think it is time. Because even if we fail to unify all of Skyrim, at least we can say, you know, we conquered East March, the greatest threat to Hafingar at the moment. And then it'll just be like, uh, you know, cleaning up the rest. So, enough of me talking. Let's just throw caution to the wind and immediately try to conquer this place. They're not in any packs? No. Of course not. They're, they're East March. Warlord, conquer Skyrim. Begin the war of the wolf and the bear. Excellent. Let's get my ships, get my ships up. What is this? We can call in our allies. We will call in our allies because we might, we might need their help here. Not that they want to help us. A lot of them don't want to, but uh, well, you know, they're gonna have to deal with that shit. So march to the capital, all of you. All of you, march to the capital. Are you sailing out? Yes, you are. Excellent. And then the rest of use guys, we need to get away from the... You know what? Keep, yeah, march them here. Let's get these guys into these ships here. That's what we need to do. We need to get our, our troops away from the borders. Of course, I'll honor my obligation and answer a call to war. Okay, thanks, Olenveld. We can unfortunately not join your war. Ah, I really wanted Morgan to help, because... Mogan? Yeah, Mogan. Because he only has uh, 700. But, uh... uh Queen... Uh, you know what, Queen Freer? Yeah, you should probably fight in the wars. You should probably fight. Uh, let's... Ooh. Get out of here. I don't care about the politics of, uh... The Solitude Docks. That doesn't interest me. 
Alright, merge these forces here. Right. Probably can speed this up a little bit. As long as East March isn't blitzing over the, the border. No, I think they're going to amass their forces. You know what we should do? Where is my spy master? Princess Freer. Shit. Uh, build a spy network uh, here. Just so that we can see what's going on. Okay, they're almost in Dawnstar. Great. I mean, after we recruit our mercenaries, we might actually outnumber East March. So I think that's what's going to give us the advantage. Oh, they got their own ships too. Eh, not that many. Not that many. Let's see. Harkon Volkihar joined the existing defensive pact. Volkihar, I will crush you. What is this? They're landing troops. Oh, snap. They're landing troops. I wasn't expecting that. But they've only got four ships that can only be at most... Yeah, that can only be at most 400. Let's see. Go to Windhelm. They've got 2,400. They were able to hire 200 soldiers. Hmm. Okay. Not the worst thing that can happen. When will battle start here? I can't really tell. Here. You march here. Whoa! Princess Marilis of Hafingar was just found dead outside her quarters. Her body was ripped to shreds in a way no normal person could accomplish. This must be the work of a lycanthrope. Oh, snap. Well, I mean, to be fair, Marilis was not one of my be better daughters. I mean, she's, she wasn't LeMay. She wasn't Freer. Ah, well, Freer's kind of... She's kind of mad as well. And she's not Patema, who's, a, who's a, a lunatic genius. That's that's crazy. We just... Damn. I wonder if the Lycanthrope... The Lycanthrope's got to be in our court, right? It's got to be somebody in our court. Shit, it could even be one of my other daughters. All right. Perform charity, research, proselytize... Yeah. Ah, I don't see any way we can actually combat that. It doesn't. We don't even have any modifiers that say lycanthrope. Anyways, we're in the middle of a war here. We can't be focusing on that. We need to focus on this army that's about to land in Coldstone, and we need to be prepared to respond in kind with our own forces. Look at these legendary generals. Oh shit! They landed. They've, they've, they're throwing in mercenaries, and our small group of men are trying to hold the line, and they're reinforced just in time. Excellent. Crush these, this vanguard. Okay. All right, so muster these solar forces together. Um, let's pursue them. I don't want any survivors. All right. Drop these forces here. Apparently, we've got more ships. Okay. Yeah, we took out roughly 200, 200. Good start, I think. Yeah, wish I could ignore that shit, but, uh... Alright. So, wipe out the rest of these mercenaries. Go ahead and rejoin forces. And they've land... They've crossed the border into Winterhold. Okay. Now, oh, we can't march on foot. Let's not march on foot. Let's get the soldiers on the ships right now. And then I'm going to use my treasury to go ahead and I'm going to hire one of the fighters guilds. Where are they at? Fighters guild of Skyrim, led by Jomar. He, he sounds trustworthy. After years of careful planning, Majorly Afmeric from the court of Chieftess Gamora. So she's up here. Oh, you better not attack me. Don't attack me. Okay, so we've got these guys. We cannot fit any more soldiers, it seems. We should be able to. There we go. So we're going to let this last group join us on the Great Hafingar Fleet. And we're going to let these guys stay here and regain their morale. Or kind. Oh, ooh, shit. Do they get a defensive bonus for being here? 
I don't think so. Which means you could probably land in Sarthal and Ironbind. Ironbind is to the south. Uh yeah, we could we could land in we could land in Sarthal and cut them off. And if they attack us. Actually, you know what? I think I'm oh that's climate is severe winter. You know what? I think we're actually going to land in Frostflow first, just because we're going to be at 50% morale when we land, and we need that we need that time to regain our morale. And then go back here and pick up the rest of our forces. I'm going to march into Sarthal now. They've taken Winterhold. They've taken the college. We will take it back. All right. Sail back to the coast of Winterhold. Very nice. They're taking some attrition from the siege. Land all forces. Sweet. Now, if you guys have played Skyrim, you remember what Sarthal was like. Sarthal was a desolate place, so... This army of 3,000 Hafingars are, uh... Ooh, I like this. Logvar. What? LeMay surely should lead should uh, lead the uh, the center, surely. Logvar, you take position over here. We have to remember that the AI will actually move our commanders around based off of what troops are where. So naturally, Jarl Logvar is going to want to lead. Wait a minute, is it Logvar? No, no, it's Jomar that leads the uh, mercenaries. Ooh, yeah, but he's a he's a he's lazy and you know Well, hopefully we get to keep our commanders Hopefully we get to keep them. We're almost at a hundred percent and they're about to take the city of Hog Hogsfjord All right, I want to be at 100% come on almost there Start the march And who is uh, who's leading them army of King Mulgrim ah so the cautious coward leads the battle, leads leads his army himself. I like it. Now we need to be careful because some crazy shit could happen. Like Mulgrim could turn into a werewolf and kill everybody. Alright, battle has begun. This, uh... This is a little premature. The war isn't going quite as I thought it would. I lose more men per battle than I'd planned. And sieges, the sieges are going on forever. More manpower, more siege weapons are what I need. Apparently I'm going to reach out to... My friend, Acolyte Quanamil. Who is... He, he leads a shrine. A shrine? Okay. Uh, ask my friend to join the war. Ask a friend for some monetary help. We don't really need the help, in all honesty. But I would like money. But battle has begun. Oop, I want to take a look at the... So, King Mulgrim went into this battle completely unprepared. He doesn't have enough commanders for all of his forces. Not good. Um, he is a marshal of four, and the other commander has a marshal of 15. So, our commanders far outweigh theirs. Oh yeah, look at that. His center's collapsing. <clears throat> There's no way, there is no way King Mulgrim was going to be able to, to uh, stand up to LeMay, the undefeated battle commander. Alright, another adventurer. My letter, my letter to Acolyte Quanamil could have gotten lost in any number of ways, and truthfully, sometimes I wished it would. The shame of having to ask a friend for help nod at me until I got Acolyte Quanamil's response. He joined my war. Alright, I mean, he only has a hundred guys, but sure. Wow. King Mulgrim. You're... Oh, shit. <clears throat> so in the ice fields and, uh, and plains of uh, Winterhold... Do you remember Winterhold is a pretty... Well, actually, I don't remember if Winterhold is still intact at this point or not. It might not be. But Winterhold wasn't really that great of a city. At least I don't think it was. Anyways, so in the ice fields of Winterhold, we have stained the snow red with the blood of the, uh, the bears of Eastmarch. And we took very little prisoners. So, I mean, I'm wondering if we should pursue this army. You know what we can do? We'll split the army in half. 
We'll split the army in half. And we'll send LeMay into Kastav after after the survivors of the Great Battle of Winterhold. And we'll leave this army here of Odar. How about we give... Oh, apparently I can't use Jomar. Okay. Sorry for that guy. And we're going to retake Winterhold. And we're going to go on the offensive. We should just march into Winter uh, Windhelm as soon as possible. I'll have LeMay do that. She'll go into the enemy's territory and she'll capture the capital of the enemy. And we will wrap up the war with the bear very quickly now. Go to the coast of Blacklight. Victory! Victory indeed. All right. Potions are in short supply. I will agree and they will pay me for my services. Excellent. Um, hold on a second. Let's go to societies. Do I have enough to rank up? Almost. Holy shit, I'm on my way to becoming a master wizard. That's insane. You guys just watch. I'm going to become the Archmage. Lower ranking members are very likely to agree to your diplomatic requests. Holy shit. I'll be able to command the rest of the Mages Guild. That's insane. I love it. All right. And uh, my daughter LeMay has just stormed the capital of the enemy. And is now sieging the capital. Oh, hey, the snows have melted. I like that. I like the little... I didn't know... Uh, this might sound really stupid, but I didn't know that that happened. That you could actually... That, that the, the, the... God, what am I trying to say? The seasons changed and stuff. Shows how much I know about this game, right? All right, how are we doing? Uh, let's not waste any time. Okay. Let's get the rest of the armies to reinforce my daughter at the capital of the enemy. And King Mogrum. Well, well, we can't really kill him. Uh, we will take him prisoner, and we will force him to bend the knee. King Mulgrim II of Eastmarch has called Thane Throck Throcknulf of Valtheim into the Eighth Solitude Conquest. And he has 300 men. Ah, he rules. Nope, stop it. I didn't mean to do that. He rules from Valtheim Towers. Interesting. What is Whiterun doing? Defending against Yarulg. Oh, shit. I was looking at this earlier. No, no, no. This is different. This guy's different. Um, Go back. Go back. Go back. Defending against Yarulg of Cult Malakath Uprising in Whiterun Cult of Malakath Revolt. Oh. S are they... You know why? Because Whiterun has taken territory outside of Skyrim, and that territory happens to be Rimwatch, which is also uh, an Orsimer colony of sorts. And so I guess the, the followers of Malakath... Oh yeah, re religious unrest. Yeah, the followers of Malakath, not too happy with the king uh, of Whiterun. But he seems to be doing pretty well against them. Defenders King Shorvar, Chief Helverd of... Well, that's a shame. It's a shame that the that the uprising isn't going to thin their numbers anymore. Because uh, we will turn our sights to Whiterun here eventually. Little thing I found out with the Warlord trait is that if you declare war fast enough, it doesn't really matter how high your threatening level gets. It only matters if people join the defensive pact. Like, they have to be a part of the defensive pact. But if you're quick with your, with your uh, war declarations, then you can attack people with the Warlord trait without having to worry about uh, having to face uh, an unstoppable army. Ooh. Uh, mm. Odar. Let's see. Odar's trying to chase down these last few remnants. We can call in allies. Uh, we don't need to do all that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Catch them here. Really, we took the castle. He's secluded with king in the Palace of the Kings. Yeah, but the Palace of Kings belongs to us now. Oh, well. No, okay. Day after day spent training and night after night pouring over treaties, tomes, and manuals has paid off. I've gone up in my level of being a priest. I go from being an expert priest to a master priest. This character is well-respected theologian, theologian and scholar and talented in both magic and matters of faith. This character is viewed as something of an oracle or prophetic servant of the faith with uh, magical skills and sermons well known throughout the realm. Holy shit. Let's see, learning goes up to three. Diplomacy goes up. I think I get um, personal combat skill goes up. 
Yeah, look at this personal combat skill. Novice, agent, genius, raider, master thief, deceitful, brave, zealous. Apparently Queen Freer is quite the fighter. And now it's gone up to 11? Damn. Unfortunately, she can't get immortality. <laughs> which is kind of shit. Yeah, march down to Morvenskar and attack this army of Kin Kinesgrove. I don't like that army of 300 warriors south of Windhelm. So go ahead and kill them. And this army is just being led by little old... Uh, oh, my son-in-law. Okay. My son-in-law. Who's he married to? Oh, he's married to uh, Potema. Interesting. My liege, I am pleased to report the success of my mission to Coldstone. The majority of the population have been converted to the cult of Molag Ball Faith. Excellent. Brilliant. Can we go to the religion? The religion tab? Religions. Wow. Ooh, wow, 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 wow. All right. So this is kind of an important little tab here. It shows, uh, well, what the major religion of Skyrim is, and it is overwhelmingly eight divines, except for the Reach, which which is more Hagrav and cults and old gods. But we can see we've got a growing presence of Molog Ball worshippers coming out of the capital of Solitude. We will continue this religious crusade until the cult of Molog Ball washes over Skyrim. With that, we're gonna actually we're gonna actually have my daughter stop proselyte. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. What? Yeah, I want to convert the. Wait a minute. Oh, we can only convert people in counties that we own. Ain't that some shit? Hey, the cult of Hermaeus Mora is here. Interesting. Wait a minute, that's not interesting, that's terrible. Grey Winter is filled with undead and is converted to the cult of Hermaeus Mora. So we're not the only Daedric Prince who's trying to make overtures in Skyrim. Hermaeus Mora is also trying to grow his presence there, which we cannot tolerate. Especially because we own Grey Winter, what the hell? Magister, Princess Patema, get to Grey Winter immediately and begin proselytizing. We can't let the cult of Hermaeus Mora grow any larger. Out of curiosity, I know this is extremely, uh... Ooh, the cult of Sheogorath. It's kind of irrelevant, but I kind of want to see what other religions are taking place. What is this? The cult of Merun's Dagon, right? All cult of Nocturnals growing in Argonia. Alkosh, Riddlethar, Alkosh, the Green Pact. Ariel... Alakir, Ariel, Eight Divines, Cult of Molokath is along this coast right here. Ah, interesting. All right, let's continue. Let's let's actually end the war because this episode is coming to a close. End the war. Protect the family. Well, I mean, you know, we we were so success we were so successful at protecting Merylis with that goddamn secret lycanthrope. Running around. Well, we'll march both armies on, on, on East March. It'll be a little shock and awe campaign. We'll give them no chance. We will break them. What is this? New important decisions. Recruit a court physician. Do we not have a court physician? Maybe we don't. Master of Blades will be Mogan. Master of Ceremonies. Court Jester. Uh, uh, no. No. Actually, you know what? We can do that. Let's make it Margart. And then we'll make Gamora the court physician. Excellent. Alright, so we need to split these armies up and start taking territory. That's what we need to do. I mean, Mulgrim, you're on the verge of being destroyed, buddy. I'm losing, but I won't give up yet. I will cast a spell on you, buddy. Ooh. How about possible rank up? Sweet, let's rank up to Master Wizard. Let's see, Lemay is almost taking this, almost taking Kynes Grove. As I enter my chambers, all the work I had done in my spare time seems to have been cleaned up and put back. Books are neatly set in alphabetical order, and notes have been thrown away. Isa Bloodmouth was apparently cleaning earlier. She's my granddaughter, isn't she? Hell yeah, and she's a genius. Let's see, affectionate. 
No, you need to be good with with the magic. Wait, so Marilus had two daughters, and they're both geniuses. Fucking awesome. I'll mess up her chambers. Cleaning is not my virtue. Yeah, let's make her conscientious. Uh, let's see. Isa is quietly cleaning her chambers after my episode in there. Seems like this is a very thorough, thorough child. Maybe I shouldn't have. Well, now she hates me, so. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, this army here is getting kind of concerning. Yeah, go here and crush them. Sweet. I've received a beautiful spell drinker amulet. Let's see. Morale defense, monthly prestige learning, personal skill. You know, I could sacrifice that to Baal, and it would get us quite a bit of Ardor, but, uh... Well, we all know how how that's working out for us. Alright. Mulgrim, you're drawing this out way too long. They were crushing your forces, and the war percentage will not change. Look at that, it's still 93%. What the hell? Yeah, I guess we need to take more territory. That's fine. We'll have Odar do that. See, like, where did, where did that 700 soldiers just come from? Hired. Oh, he's hiring them. With the magical gold he's just somehow getting. I don't understand it. Get out of the way. Pursue them. Sometimes these wars do become kind of tedious. I wish they were more decisive. So that we wouldn't have to do this shit where we're just killing endless amounts of soldiers for no reason. I'm tempted to assault, but I don't really want to. Capture them. Mogan the Unseen has declared Scarhammer Karthspire Ducal Conquest. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, man. The war is going well, but it seems the game is uh, conspiring to kill off all of my brood. At age 32, your daughter LeMay Bloodmouth died in battle against Thane Throckmelf of Valheim. At least she went down fighting, though, like a real Nord. Like, she died like a real Nord. She wasn't uh, mysteriously killed. She actually went down in battle, which is pretty damn awesome. And she was pregnant. Fuck. Why was she fighting? <laughs> why was she fighting? That's probably why she got killed was because she was pregnant. Ah, oh, shit. Well, uh, now we'll be playing as Princess Patema, which could very well be a part of Patema's plan. Grosta and Freer. Yeah, her children are pretty lackluster. My commander, Tanis Lame, was cornered and slain by the enemy on the battlefield. She brought... She fought bravely right until the end. Where is this son of a bitch? Combat is the best teacher. Wisp, uh, Queen Freer has become a more proficient commander. What? Um, oh, she got experienced. Ah, and she showed bravery on the field of battle. Become a great general. Queen Freer wishes to become a great general whose battles and strategies are studied, studied across Nern. Uh, she should already be... A, yeah, she should be well-known already, but... Uh, I will have Thane Throcknulf's head. There we go. With that, with that last ultimate sacrifice, Queen Freer was able to secure victory over the bear in the east. Jesus, that, that war was a lot more costly than uh, I was kind of hoping it would be. Go ahead, land all the ships and everything. Oh yeah, now people are joining the, the packs like crazy. It's probably because our threat level is insanely huge. Yep, it's 60. 60% 60 now. But we have at last done it. We've conquered the bear in the east. Idle council members. Who's idle? Ah, oh, you're idle. Okay. Go ahead and improve relations with uh, Jarl Nassen. Okay. I just kind of randomly picked that. 
Rorikian Peasant Revolt. Ah, so the, this, the, the, the village of Rorikstead is uh, revolting. Now, out of curiosity, Jarldom of Hafingar, do I have enough to create this? You need to control 66%, and I control 60. God damn it. Well, we'll have to wrap this episode up here. We have succeeded in conquering the Bear of Eastmarch, and now Hafingar stands as the preeminent power in Skyrim. Really, all we have to do is conquer one more territory. We need to get that last 6%, and then we can create the title of, uh, well, Skyrim. Queen Freer will become High Queen Freer, and we will no longer need the Warlord trait because we'll have the uh, title for all of Skyrim. So then we can just do Ducal claims on literally everything and force everyone to bend the knee. But all of that will have to take will have to take place in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Crusader Kings 2, Elder Kings Edition, The Dawn Guard. I have been the Golden Joblivian. And until next time, see you all later. <laughs>